keep what you kill. What's up guys, boy Benny. I don't have a math or accounting degree, but I can tell you that when you lose $400 million, it's never a great sign. It's not a great indicator of your health as a business or your intelligence. And especially if you're losing $400 million on cherished, beloved franchises like Marvel and Indiana Jones, then you're really doing it wrong. I mean, it's one thing to make like a big crypto bet. It's a totally different thing to lose $400 million on Indiana Jones, one of the most successful franchises in human history. Ooh, baby, but that's exactly what Disney did. Indiana Jones and Marvel. Marvel's confirmed nearly $400 million loss for Disney. Disney releases a new financial report that shows that Indy 5 lost well over $100 million. Ooh. Now, they don't have to report the streaming numbers, but let's just say that um, Indiana Jones and the Dial of Dementia lost out to Sound of Freedom from Angel Studios. Oh yeah, that's right. So uh, uh, just, just a thought here, but taking your beloved, cherished legacy characters, Indiana Jones and Luke Skywalker, and debasing them and humiliating them for a female girl boss seems like a bad business strategy. Let's go ahead and check the numbers, Jack. See what they show. Wow, bold strategy here. Here's the uh, Disney ticker for the last couple days absolute and total collapse. Disney is uh, collapsing as a stock and Disney is a very, very unhealthy company. Disney is run, of course, by the killer of franchises, Bob Iger, a man who's best known from his South Park character demanding that we put chicks in it and make those chicks gay and lame. Somebody who's not lame at all is Elon Musk, who sure would be nice to have the help of the world's richest man in your collapsing business. That's exactly what Twitter found. And that's exactly what many companies have found, obviously investors and in SpaceX and Tesla and so on. They've made a lot of money from Elon Musk. The guy knows how to run a company. The guy knows how to run a media company, as we've learned. And so be sure it'd be nice to have Elon as an investor, wouldn't it be? Right? That would definitely boost the stock. Elon says that he would definitely buy Disney stock if investors elect Nelson Peltz to the board. Now, what's going on here? Nelson Peltz is the guy who is challenging Disney for a board seat by buying a bunch of stock and sort of like staging a takeover from the hand-selected board seats at Disney uh, that are completely controlled by Bob Iger. So if you, if you don't have a unanimous board, then Nelson Peltz can start to like trend the content that Disney's making in the direction that the audience might like. Nelson Peltz should definitely be on the Disney board, says Elon Musk. He would help reform the company, improve the quality of the product, and generally serve as best interest of the shareholders, as he's done in many other companies. It'd be a significant improvement in the Disney share price. Isn't that the point, right? You run a company, after all. It's not a charity. Well, I don't own any Disney shares today. I would definitely buy their shares. If Nelson was elected to the board, his track record is excellent. Well, I mean, Elon Musk is the richest guy in the world. Having him buy your shares would be maybe Disney should stop fighting and just let this one dude who loves Disney and owns like more Disney shares than almost anyone alive. Uh, maybe they should let him on the board, right? Disney does not let Nelson Peltz on the board <laughs> wins proxy fight as shareholders reelect full board. So they couldn't even give up one seat to a guy that wants to make the company better. Remember, these are the people that brought you $400 million losses on just two movies, uh, with legacy franchises. Yeah, it, it just took like three years for Marvel to go from like billion dollar blockbusters and Indiana Jones to go from like a beloved action hero to total financial jokes, leading to the potential bankruptcy of the entire company. Ladies and gentlemen, um, Disney, of course, fought Nelson Peltz because they can't allow anyone to ever challenge them as Elon Musk did in our favorite famous interview. Her perception that that was part of a apology tour. There was advertisers leaving. We talked to Bob Iger I hope today. they stop. You don't want them to advertise? No. If somebody's gonna try to blackmail me with advertising, blackmail me with money, go f yourself. Go 
your side. Hey, Bob. <laughs> it's the hey, Bob, that gets me every single time. The hey, Bob, gets me every single time. Elon Musk published the DEI standards, inclusion standards for Disney general entertainment content. Anonymous source just sent me this from Disney. It's mandatory institutionalized racism and sexism. Elon Musk, obviously, uh, pissing very much in the punch bowl here. Disney slapped with civil rights complaint over 50% DEI goal. Underrepresented actors and crew sidelines white Christian men using files leaked by Elon Musk. So now Disney is being sued. Hard to imagine how they're going to win this. How would you win this? It is illegal to do what they're talking about here. This talks about effectively how they're just going to fire all the male, pale, stale people who've been at their jobs because of the color of their skin. Well, that's directly against the Civil Rights Act. That, that's my definition illegal. So Bob Iger, pretty upset about all this, uh, was asked recently in an interview actually that took place today, his thoughts on Elon Musk, um, the guy who could have potentially saved the, saved the company, right, by investing. All you had to do was give Nelson Peltz a board seat on your failing company, but nope, no, no, no one will stop us from blindly sailing directly off the cliff. Speaking of uh, hostilities, I mean, I know you are aware of Elon Musk and what he's been, continues to say, or at least uh, post on his X platform. How do you approach that? You know, somebody who's got such a big microphone as Musk kind of coming after you all the time. I ignore it. You do? Yeah. It's just there's no, there's no relevance to the Walt Disney Company or to me. Uh, so when he says I would, you know, buy shares if Peltz was on the board and Next he comes after you as being because uh, he's on his anti-woke campaign. People have been coming after me and the company for years. And it's just I don't get distracted by those things. But the woke thing has had more of an impact. I mean, you've said to me that you would love to be just out of the culture wars. Do you feel like you're succeeding in that? Well, I think in. Yeah, yes. I mean, what I, what I, I think the noise has sort of quieted down. Um, I've been uh, preaching this for a long time at the company before I left and since I came back that our number one goal is to entertain. I think, look, the term woke is thrown around rather liberally. No, no pun intended in that regard. Uh, I think a lot of people don't even understand really what it means. The bottom line is that infusing messaging as a sort of a number one priority in our films and TV shows. The message. The message. Not what we're up to. They need to enter, be entertaining. And look, where the Disney company can have a positive impact on the world, whether it's, you know, fostering acceptance and understanding of, you know, people of all different types, great. Um, but generally speaking, we need to be entertainment for, an entertainment first company. Uh, and, I, and I've worked really hard to do that. You have. I have. And yeah. how, in what way? What do you mean when you say engaging that? with our our executives, engaging with the creative community, you know, returning to our roots, just, you know, making sure that everybody's aligned on what our priorities are. I, you know, I and, and understanding that look, we're we're trying to reach a very very diverse audience. And on one hand, in in order to do that, what you the stories you tell have to really reflect the audience that you're trying to reach, but that audience, because they are so diverse, really, first and foremost, they want to be entertained, and sometimes they can be turned off by certain things, and we just have to be more sensitive to the interest of a broad audience. It's not easy. You know, it's not, you can't please everybody all the time. Right? Yeah, you can't please everybody all the time. That's why we're suing Ron DeSantis, because we didn't like his legislation because we somehow are like a government entity. Ron DeSantis, the governor of the state, who was elected by the people. Nobody elected Disney, Jack. We sued Ron DeSantis because Ron DeSantis says that parents should make decisions for their children and not the predators at Disney. Wow. Lo and behold, Bob Iger has seen the error of his ways. They've dropped all of their lawsuits against Ron DeSantis and now are planning to expand significantly after Ron DeSantis ripped away their special little privileges in Florida. Just in after settlement with DeSantis appointed oversight board, Walt Disney the world is reportedly moving forward with his largest ever expansion of the Magic Kingdom theme park. Moves forward with large expansion. Ron DeSantis tweeting this saying not quite what the media left corporate GOP were predicting last year. Do tend to agree, ladies and gentlemen, do tend to agree. DeSantis big time won this fight, and Bob Iger had to admit it, right? And straight up admit it. Pissing in the punch bowl, ladies and gentlemen. It uh, sucks.
It sucks because there's so little that unites us as a country and there's so little that like brings people together and some of these like cherished iconic properties are now dead. Some of the things that like brought the country together, quite frankly, were like sports and entertainment and music. And now you have every athlete kneeling. You have Taylor Swift on more than the actual NFL games. You have Diddy's house being raided. And you have Star Wars just killed. Disney's Star Wars destroyed. Indiana Jones destroyed. The destroyer of brands. Bob Iger. Out and saying I've lost effectively. Um, I want to move on to some other news because we're already running short on time. You you've settled up with Florida. Um, is that over and done with? Are you happy with the new arrangement there? There's still a federal case, so over and done, not completely. There's still um, the free speech free case? speech case. Um, but you know, we view what we did there is really I mentioned on on um, our. Um, annual meeting call the other day, I guess it was yesterday. just yesterday, <laughs> yeah. feels like it was a month ago, that we called it a win-win. This is a good thing for the state of Florida and a good thing for the Walt Disney Company. We settled the matter on a state level, and um, this gives us an opportunity to engage you know, more effectively and more deeply with the oversight board, uh, which has also been reconstituted to some extent. Uh, and make the kind of investments that we need to make in that business, not only to grow our business, but to grow in, in terms of the state of Florida, create more jobs, more revenue for the state of Florida. It's a good thing that we do. It is. And it, so we can expect no more hostilities between Governor DeSantis and the company? Well, I would hope not, but I, I, can't, I can't speak for Governor DeSantis in that regard. 